AI has been used often for climate prediction. How accurate is it today? And how can AI make these forecasts stronger, more accurate? In some reports, they found that the current mm. physics old method prediction mm. versus mm. the AI prediction was actually 1000x more accurate. They also managed to detect the, the motion of some of the hurricanes with the help of Google Mind. The AI system managed to predict it nine days before it with a very, very high accuracy. How this can help us, it can help us a lot. In case of disaster, we know what to do a few weeks even before it happens. Mm. And also it can help us for the crops, it can help us for the pollution. It, with the help also of the IoT, which is Internet of Things, yeah. that we have sensors plan planted everywhere. Mm. We understand more about the soil, about the pollution, mm. about the gases, about many things. The yeah. AI is all about. Where do you see AI doing its best right now and where could it backfire if we weren't being careful? Backfiring of the AI will not be, not be because of the AI. Mm. It will be because it is in the wrong hands. AI itself is just a tool and we as humans, we are excelling in creating and using tools all of our history. Yeah. But mm. when we created the gunpowder, which was supposed to be for fireworks, we used it to kill with it. Hello everyone, I am Shruti Sitaraman. I run a digital media company and I am a sustainability advocate. And today we're joined by Mr. Nader Turki, who is an AI strategy consultant, a keynote speaker, and a thought leader who bridges innovation, technology, all with human purpose. So today we're gonna to talk about um, our AI and sustainability friends or foes but a lot more. So welcome to the Green Generation podcast. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm going to dive in to that main question, right? Um, if you had to choose one word, is AI a friend or enemy of the planet right now and why? Oh, that's a very uh, strong question, like a nice start. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome. From my side, um, I believe I'm an expert in AI in the area of strategy. Mm. So I'm looking for the long term of the AI part, either from the business perspective, from mm -hmm. ethical perspective, mm -hmm. and even from sustainability, sustainability mm. perspective. I believe in the long term, AI is not our enemy. AI will be the solution for many of our problems in the planet, mm. in the scarcity, in the pollution, so I believe the amount of projects currently being done for mm -hmm. helping AI for either climate change mm -hmm. or for predictable uh, weather or the pollution, even mm -hmm. uh, uh, detection or the sensors, amazing projects are currently happening. So I believe AI is our friend if we look on the longer term, not on the short term. And talking about that long term and you talked about pollution, energy, all of that. Um, energy use is one of AI's biggest criticism, right? So how do we make AI green and not just smart or just innovative? True, <laughs> but let me tell you the facts because yeah. some people are just exaggerating about the energy use of AI. Mm. I heard one of the reports saying that it takes a full glass of water just to have a prompt uh, in uh, AI. That's the energy consumption, which is not true. Mm. These were reports that were not peer-reviewed. Yeah. However, what I like is one of Google's uh, full technical review on one of their data centers about their AI application that is mm. called Gemini. Mm. And I believe this is like one of the biggest AI solutions that we have currently. So they made a full technical review. Okay. And that full technical review was surprisingly that AI is not costing that much. Mm. There is an impact. I'm not saying that it's fully green yet yeah. but there let me give you some numbers mm. so their technical report detailed mm. report said mm. that if you have the median or the, let's say the average of one text prompt mm. into the ai gemini mm. so that text prompt and the reply for it yeah. they are called tokens mm. they consumed about 0 
watts per hour. And I'm saying watts, not mm. kilowatts. Yeah. That's equal if you are using your microwave for one second. So okay. I don't think that I'm using the AI, the average person, not me, average user, I don't think they are using 30 times yeah. the AI per day. But definitely we are using the micro microwave for 30 seconds per day. Yeah. And even let's say the uh, carbon emission, it was 0.03 grams. And that's equal to just moving your car for few centimeters, not even one meter. And uh, the water consumption for using the AI, mm -hmm. it was detected about 0.26 millimeters. That's five drops of water. It's not yeah. a full glass or something. Yeah. So with these figures, and by the way, they, they made it comprehensive. So even it's not about the computers you are using right now. It's yeah. also the idle machines. It's the uh, data center consumption. It's the overheads. All of these are mm -hmm. included. So the overall, I believe they mentioned that it's similar to the emissions of using your TV for nine seconds. So again, nobody is telling you don't use the TV. Yeah. Nobody is telling you don't yeah. use the microwave, but they are telling you don't use AI because it's harmful, harmful for the environment. I believe that's an exaggeration. Again, I'm not saying that it's 100% green, but yeah. I'm just saying that labeling AI that it is very harmful for the environment right now, I believe this is not an accurate statement. Mm. We should go into much more details and check reports before exaggerating it. I believe the benefits of AI will be much better. No, and I think this is definitely a myth busted with the most real world examples that anyone can understand. All of the things that we use daily on such a large scale um, definitely causes more of the emission and more of the environmental impact than we realize. So it is your sort of call to start going greener, using AI, uh, making the shift, and now hopefully with all of these myths busted, um, you will make more of an initiative. So that's great to hear. And so now talking about the short term, right? Like where do you see AI doing its best right now and where could it backfire if we weren't being careful? Backfiring of the AI will not be, not be because of the AI. Mm. It will be because it is in the wrong hands. AI itself is just a tool and we we as humans, we are excelling in creating and using tools all of our history. Yeah. But when we managed to use the fire, mm. we killed with it. Mm. When we created the gunpowder, which was supposed to be for fireworks, we used it to kill with it. When we entered the Bronze Age, we managed to melt the copper and tin together and make a lovely new moldable uh, uh, metal we killed with it. Mm. So that's the problem. Weaponizing our tools is the problem. And usually it is done by the hands of humans. Mm. So I'm not worried about AI. I'm yeah. worried about AI in the wrong hands. But AI itself, for a long time, we were waiting for such a tool, a tool that can think with us as mm. humans. I'm against the use of artificial intelligence. I believe it's better to, to be extended intelligence or even augmented intelligence because we are, we don't like artificial, it's cold, it's alien for us, it's the word is, makes it, hmm, are you an enemy? <laughs> I believe it's not. We are just yeah. extending our intelligence in the machine yeah. so that it would assist us to make better decisions mm. and to thrive in life because this is what we do when we have a no, new nice tool. Yeah. So I believe in a bright future yeah. with the AI if we use it in the right way, in the right ethical way. Mm. So I'm not saying that AI should be ethical. Yeah. It's who are using them should yeah. be ethical. Absolutely. I think in the hands of the user is definitely the key word here. Um, how we choose to implement it, how much we choose to implement it, because I truly believe that AI cannot fully replace the human as a resource. Work with it, not devoid of using your own resources. Um, work smart, but don't work less. I think I think that is what I'm getting, um, which I think is a great, great sort of message for everyone who has now moved into the digital world and has moved into AI being such a powerful tool to understand, use it wisely, use it for your benefit, and it will truly be like a power in your hands. So use it wisely. With and great power comes great responsibility. Yes, be and, responsible. and use it ethically, please. And ethically. Absolutely.
Okay, so now talking about climate and data impact. AI has been used often for climate prediction. How accurate is it today? And how can AI make um, these forecasts stronger, more accurate? How accurate you'd be really surprised that in some reports they found that the current mm. physics old method prediction yeah. Yeah. versus the AI prediction was actually 1000x more accurate. And that's a huge number. And yeah. these are reports. Yeah. And some of them, I believe, by the European Center for uh, Weather Forecast, mm. they they also managed to detect the, the motion of some of the hurricanes with the help of Google Mind, which mm. is one of the, the deep mind by Google. It's one of the AI systems for predicting the weather. Mm. And the, the motion of that hurricane the AI system managed to predict it nine days before it with a very, very high accuracy. Right. So AI uh, uh, for climate prediction is going to be amazing. How this can help us, it can help us a lot. In case of disaster, we know what to do a few weeks even before it happens. Mm. And also it can help us for the crops, it can help us for the pollution, it, with the help also of the IoT, which is Internet of Things, yeah. that we have sensors plan, planted everywhere. Mm. We understand more about the soil, about the pollution, mm. about the gases, about many things. The yeah. AI is all about data. Yeah. And when we give it more data, and we need to give it more data about how the soil is, how the weather is, how the air quality is, and it will give us predictions much more accurate than today. No, absolutely. And I think these are so important because um, today's world, as I'm sure between how our parents were raised in terms of the quality of produce that was available, when we talk about soil, it's not just for growing crops. It's the kind of crops that we get access to in terms of produce that we cook and eat with. The same food is not as nutritious, not as nourishing, does not suffice for the nutrient requirements our body needs. So all of these predictions definitely help us live a more healthier life, have access to better nutrition. So I think these are definitely um, ways that we should be using AI to help predict, prevent, um, save lives, save the environment all and of it. even save the planet because yeah. think about it because wh what i do is that i create with organizations and governments use cases yeah. with the help of ai mm -hmm. so imagine this use case that came to my mind mm. imagine if you have um in the land you have some sensors to mm. check do you need water now or later on mm. and you connect these sensors with an ai system that is managing the irrigation system. Mm -hmm. How much water can we save? Because now we know accurately what the plant needs today mm. and what the plant needs in a hot day and in a sunny day and in a windy day. Yeah. And it depends also on which area is exposed to the sun more. We can save millions of liters of water just Absolutely. because with the help of AI, we can plant some sensors to give us more data. Yeah. This is the intelligence level that we need from AI to help us save the planet in a different way, indirect, because we need water. Absolutely. And we need less pollution and we need to detect the gases that are harming us and we need to detect the nutrition that we need into the body. Yeah. All of these are just data. Yeah. And this is where AI helps and plays a big role in the future. No, absolutely. I think it also targets um, the growing, increasing um, problem that we have in terms of farmers and suicide rates of farmers because they are unaware of how the weather is impacted and so much has changed. <clears throat> so much has changed and they are unable to suffice for the demand of produce. So now with predictions, they are able to better give or provide access to resources that we need in terms of measurement. So help saving the planet also in turn helps save lives, uh, helps us live better quality of life. So I think it's definitely um, a great way to try and use AI ethically, responsibly, um, correctly, um, for sure. And <clears throat> if you had to give young innovators one data problem to solve, what sustainability blind spot would you want them to tackle first? I believe water is the part that we mm. are not thinking about. This is a blind spot yeah. uh, that we need to think about because 
water we are using it for chilling now we are mm. using it for cooling we are using it for data centers we are using it we need to have different method of checking about how we are consuming water how mm. we are polluting the water yeah. i believe if we manage to focus on that part mm. the future of sustainability will change because we will manage to save much more lives because of the water crisis that are increasing mm. in many, many countries and many, mm. many regions. And uh, uh, some areas, they are facing in the next 50 years a huge crisis in water. Mm. So let's start by now. Yeah. It is a blind spot that we need to really measure it in accurate details, even if you know, our malls, our government offices, our hotels. What is the water consumption? How are you polluting that? The data centers and so on. We need to really take care of that area much more than today. Yeah, and I think the key statement is don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow's today, today is now, right? So start acting upon things now, like you said. You know, um, I uh, in my book, I uh, my novel, Memories of a Future, there's a statement there. It's tomorrow never comes. Mm. We go for it. Yeah. So we need to go for it yeah. because it will not come to you. So what are you doing today to go to tomorrow in a different way? Yeah, absolutely. And that's an inspirational quote or sort of thought for all of you guys. So um, absolutely. And go check out his book if you need some more inspiration. So most people don't even know what digital waste is. So let's start with, could you break it down for us and why does it matter? Yeah. So. In the digital area, mm. there's digital waste and e-waste. Mm. So let me start with the e-waste because it's easier for people to understand. So e-waste is when you have an old phone, old iPad, old laptop, yeah. and they are sitting there and they are not being recycled. Mm. And how to get rid of them, nobody knows. Can AI actually help design smarter circular supply chains? Ones that don't just recycle, but completely rethink and redirect the whole process. Yes, definitely. I believe that AI can do this, but mm. the question here would be with the companies willing to do that or not. So the mm. capability is there. Like imagine if you are designing a product yeah. and with the help of AI, you are designing the start of the product and the end of the product. Mm. This is what's missing now. 